All right, let's build a simple dividend discount model today, and then uh, next one I'll build a, a little more complicated version that expands itself to meet um, based on certain criteria. So uh, we'll build the framework today by going to Yahoo Finance, getting the historical prices for Yum. So historical prices, uh, if you want dividends, I think this is the best place to go. There might be other places, but we can click this little dividends only toggle, get prices. You know, it'll give us a history of all of the, the dividends that they have paid, and we can export it directly into an Excel document. So that's pretty simple. Um, it will come in as a CSV, so uh, keep that in mind when you want to save it later. But anyway, we have dividends now. Uh, I'm going to build an annual model. We can build quarterly models, but they get really big, uh, so we can mess with that another day. Uh, and so for now, uh, we just kind of look at the structure. So you can see like in 2015, they paid 41, 41, 41, 46, 14, 37, 37, 37, 41. So they tend to up their dividend in uh, the last quarter of each year, it looks like. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. So except for, no, even. So going back several years. So I'm going to take these and turn them into annualized um values and then I'm going to put them in a separate sheet where we'll start building out uh, the model. So I'm going to go in the, the new sheet, put year, um, and for now we'll put how far back do we want to go. Uh, let's see, we'll do 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, let's go back to 10. So we'll start with 2010, uh, 2011, I like those, drag through 15, and then I want dividend. So we need annualized dividends. Uh, so if we go back to 10, the dividend was, the four dividends added up to um, 88 cents. So we'll go back over here and this is 0.88, 2011, 103.5, Twelve is uh, one nineteen. One nineteen. Two thousand thirteen. Sorry, this part's kind of boring. One three seven five. Fourteen. We're gonna do uh, one fifty two, and then fifteen is. 169. <clears throat> 169. Alright, so instead of putting 2016, this is going to be year one and this is going to be year two. We'll just build like a 25 year model for fun. Um, you know, we don't know when the terminal year is, and I don't, you know, we can't in 15 minutes talk through how to do that much research on a, on a you know, when a company is going to hit. Um, uh, when a company is going to hit their terminal growth rate or anything like that. If I could spell that would be helpful. Growth. Uh, so I'm going to use these. So if I take 2011 divided by 2010 minus 1, it's going to give me the growth rate percentage. So it grew 18% in that year. Uh, 15, 15, 11, or 10 and a half and 11. Um, so that's going to be one of the ways we kind of guess what the growth rate is. We know that for they've already paid one, and we can expect the first three dividend payments of 2016 to be 46 cents. Uh, and then it looks like that last dividend it grew five cents. It grew um, four cents. It grew uh, three and a half cents. It grew you know five cents. So somewhere in the three and a half to five range, it looks like. So if we do uh, 46 cents times 3 plus uh, 50, how about that? That seems reasonable. So there's our estimate for the dividend in uh, year one. So we're going to treat this like we're building it from December 31st. That's fine. Um, and then we're going to guess the growth rates from there. Uh, so right now they've been growing the dividend 17, 15, 10, 11. 
Uh, their current growth rates, I tend to like to go here on Yahoo Finance, go to analyst estimates, kind of look at what the expected growth rates are. Um, so next year, 13.8, next five years, about 12, but the dividend seems to be outpacing the growth um, in recent years. So if growth picks up, uh, we can guess that growth is going to, and dividends is going to remain decently high. Um, uh, I'm actually going to make it more aggressive than these last two uh, because I think the way they're splitting the company up and stuff will affect this. But again, we're going to make simple assumptions today and then we can tweak the model next time. So I'm going to start at 15% uh, and I want it to reach a, uh, not a, you know, uh, a perpetual growth rate in year 25. So I'm going to set that up. So if I want it to reach a perpetual growth rate, typically when we talk about perpetual, we need mean something near uh, historic inflation. Um, so perpetual growth is going to be like, let's make it 4%. So at some point, they're just going to become a company that grows really, really, really boring and steadily. All right. Uh, so I want to get from 15 down to 4, and I want to do it in 25 years. Uh, or no, sorry, 20, this isn't 2. So actually uh, 23 periods, right? Uh, so if I take... Um, I'll do it down here, just so you can see uh, growth factor. So if we do this linearly, we can take um, current growth, 0.15 minus uh, perpetual growth. So that tells us how far we got to move. And then we divide it by the 23 years. And it'll tell us how much it's going to go down each year linearly to get there. So it doesn't have to be linear. We can do it other ways, but that's the way I'm going to do it today. So if I take that minus uh, this growth factor, then I can, um, and you'll see, let's give it some decimals so you can see what's going on. Um, and then I drag it over. It should hit. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> uh I3 minus C9. What in the world? There we go. J3 minus C9. That's what we want. If you drag that over, it should hit 4% in year 25, and we can apply our um, perpetual model there, uh, our DGM. And so then we can guess what the dividends are going to be using the growth rate. So if this was last year's dividend times one plus the growth rate and I can do things like this too. hop up control over down control shift left control R and fill all and we can guess what the dividends are going to be um, going out a number of years okay and then like I said we're going to apply perpetual so this isn't saying they're going to end after 25 years. This is going to go on from year 25 to infinity. But we can once we have a fixed growth, so we're going to treat it as if 4% goes on forever, we can apply DGM. So I'm going to go ahead and put the DGM out here. Um, and DGM is that the price, uh, in this case, P24, so for the previous period, whenever we reach uh, perpetual. So P24, the price in year 24, uh, is equal to the dividend in year 25 divided by R minus G. Oh, we need to define R real quick. So we need a discount rate. Uh, for now, I'm just going to make one up. Um, and we'll talk more in class about how, how we do this. But the discount rate or our, our expected return on equity, uh, let's call it 12% for now. Um, so that's in C10. All right, so the dividend, 25, divided by um, <clears throat> R, which I said was in C10, is that right? Minus our growth rate, perpetual growth rate. Okay, so this is the theoretical price of the stock in 24. Okay. So now let's discount our cash flow. So we want to see what the discounted value of all of our dividends uh, starting in year one, because all these are past, right? Uh, so our discounted cash flow is going to equal uh, all of the dividends over um, 
over one plus our discount rate. So we're gonna discount this just like we normally discount things uh, to the power of how far out it is, all right? So uh, to the power of this string of numbers going out. So we're gonna do that. And again, I can hit Control right down. I'm actually gonna back up to 24. Control Shift left, Control R. So we're gonna discount each of them, each of the dividend payments. So you see 188 turns into 167, 216 turns into 172. And as long as our growth is above our discount rate, this is uh, going to go up. See how it keeps going up? As soon as we get below our discount rate, it's going to start going down. Okay. Um, and then this last one, we're actually going to discount this price back because we want every dividend from year 25 to infinity uh, going out at 4%. And so I'm going to discount this back again at 1 plus C10. Uh, to the power of this time 24 rather than the, the power right above it because again we're looking at P24 not P25 so uh, when we did the DGM it already discounted it back one period so we just have to make that modification and then the theoretical price of a stock so our price estimate is just the sum of all the discounted cash flows so the value of a financial instrument is the future, uh, present value of all future cash flows. So we get a price estimate of $52.15 or $0.16. Cents. Now, and, you know, if we go look at what the price of Young Brands is right now, it's $77.40. And we can talk about, okay, we made some real simple assumptions. You know, we could have been light on growth. We might not be growing it aggressively enough. We could be uh, cutting it off too soon so maybe it won't reach a perpetual growth rate for 50 years you know we can build the model out longer and so what we're going to do next time we're going to build a model that can expand and contract to meet uh, the market price that way we can kind of see it what what um, toggles will get us to a more uh, or a price more in line with what we're seeing in the market um, this is the basic model so we just get some dividends we guess uh, what the growth is going to look like and use that to calculate the future dividends um, and then from there we discount them all back at some discount rate uh, and, and again in class we'll talk more about how to set a discount rate and like things like corporate we talk about it but you know the more risky a stock is the higher discount rate is and stuff like that that we've talked about before but anyway we have a price and next time i'm going to build some of these uh and if statements and then we'll we'll make the price fit the market um, by by using some goal seeks and stuff like that so this is the simple model We'll do the more complicated model next time.